Earlier, we saw some of the properties of digital hash functions. In summary, a digital hash function produces a fixed size block of data that summarizes an arbitrary input. It is computationally infeasible for someone to create a message that produces a given hash. Let's think for a moment about what a signature means on a paper document. If I sign a contract, for example, I am indicating that I agree with the contents of the document in some way. Signatures on paper documents aren't very robust. It's not difficult for someone to forge a signature, and with digital manipulation, it is easy to transfer the signature to a different document. Paper signatures are largely proxy representations of legal concepts, and this isn't something that is particularly helpful when it comes to digital signatures. For a digital signature to be meaningful, we need some way of binding the contents of the document with a particular identity. The digital hash function provides a convenient way to capture the contents of the document without needing the entire document. This gives us the property we desire of not being able to modify the document or to be able to use the signature on another document. The other feature we need is some way of connecting that document with a particular identity. This is provided by an algorithm called a digital signature algorithm. There are several of these algorithms that differ a bit in terms of their properties, so I will describe them in a more general sense. A given digital signature algorithm will be defined by two pairs of things. The first is a pair of keys known as a public and private key. These keys will be generated together and are generally a small block of data, the details of which will be defined by the algorithm choice. What is important is that the public key is information that can be widely known, whereas the private key must be kept as a secret by the party desiring to sign a document. Anyone with access to the private key can generate their own signatures. In the MCU boot case, the private key will be kept by the party that is producing firmware images. There can be more complexity than this, but I won't be covering it in this video. Along with this key pair, the digital signature algorithm will also define two operations. The first operation, called sign, takes the private key and a small block of data known as the message and produces a digital signature. Note that in this case, the message is not the whole image, but a small summary of it, the output of the hash function. The second operation takes this message, the digital signature, and the public key and determines if the signature was indeed created by that message using the private key associated with this signature. Most digital signature algorithms work with only a small amount of data, and it is appropriate to use the output of the hash function as this message. To see this whole process, we take the image we want to sign and run it through the digital hash function. This hash output is then given along with a private key to the sign operation, which produces the digital signature. Later, to verify the signature, we take the image we want to verify and run it through the digital hash function. The hash output is given along with the digital signature and the public key to the verify operation, which will tell us if this signature really does sign this message with this key. If you recall, after the verified part of the image in the flash slot, we have a series of TLV entries. Earlier, we stored the output of the hash function. To sign this image, we give this hash along with the private key to the sign operation, and we'll store this signature in the TLV. However, we also need to tell MCU boot which signature we will use. To do this, we will take the public key we are using and run it through the hash function. We create a TLV entry with a tag of key hash, hex 01, and the hash bytes of this output. Then we follow this with another TLV entry and a tag appropriate for the digital signature algorithm we are using. At the time I am making this video, there are five possible algorithms. To verify the signature, MCU boot will use the key hash to determine which public key to use. It will then hash the image and feed the digital signature, the public key, and the image hash into the verify operation. If this returns true, we know that someone had the private key at some point and signed this particular image. In upcoming videos, I will go into how encrypted images work with MCU boot.